Hi, everybody. Great to see you. I've been uh, running around Future Quest today. Been so awesome. Uh, I was uh, corrected on two things. One, there's a couple here that met at Future Quest, that's right, and fell in love and got married. Is that right? Not this, not this year, but in years past. And now they're, it's awesome. They're the one in a million. So again, you have no shot. You have no shot, but good luck. Uh, and then uh, I, I've been told I look like uh, another celebrity. You get Mr. Incredible. I've been running around all day. Everyone's like, Mr. Incredible. It's very nice. Uh, but someone said, you look just like Paul Blart, mall cop. That's not even... Now, now you're just being mean. And this little junior high girl runs up to me and says, no, it's not Paul Blart. She's like that. It's that one guy from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs that gets stuck in a chicken. Chicken Brent. Like, you guys are literally just picking random white guys and saying that that's what I look like. That's not cool. Not cool. Tom Brady, thank you to whoever said that. That's a, there you go. Uh... So I was talking to someone this afternoon, and they said, did you hear the rest of Richard Montagna? Do you remember him? He's the hot, flaming hot Cheeto guy. You said, did you hear the rest of the story? I said, what happened? They said they found out that he actually made up the story and that some mid-level woman executive came up with flaming hot Cheetos, and he was lying and took credit the whole time. And so I guess it just goes back to the message we heard about the importance of your heart. Like, uh, because, uh, wow, there's a good example of someone who apparently lacked integrity for sure. The number one question that people said when they come up to me today was, how, how do I do this? Like, how do I follow Jesus? How, is my, how do I keep my heart sensitive and close to God? How do I guard it and protect it and be renewed on a regular basis? And so that's my goal for tonight's message. I'm stoked that you're back. Not that you had a choice because your leader did a head count and they made sure you were here. So turn to your leader right now and say, thank you for being here. Just go ahead and tell them that. They need to know that. And then tell your, tell your leader, you're not going to get much sleep tonight because we're going to burn down that hotel. Tell them that. Go ahead. No, don't, don't actually do that. Don't do that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. So excited about what we have planned uh, for the rest of this week. I know some of the other speakers that are coming in and human bowling or whatever that was where they strap you into that thing. What was that called? It was awesome. My goodness. Would not do that if you paid me, but it was incredible. Uh, in my grandma's house, she has a, she had a, a plaque. It's in a lot of people's houses, especially the older generation. I don't have it in mine, but it's been in both of my grandma's houses had this plaque and it said, uh, it was a, it's like the sandy beach and a sunset. And then it would say, the title of the poem was Footprints. And it was this beautiful poem about how in difficult times, Jesus carries us. And it's a beautiful message that um, our youth group made a little parody of that I thought would be fun to start with tonight. Watch this. One night, a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My son, my precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. I carried you, man. Do you know how hard that is? you know how much I fast? Do you know how little muscle I have? 
You're freaking huge. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Walking with Jesus, that's what I want to talk with you about tonight. Thank you, that was my one and only uh, IMD credit right there, that was it. Uh, the guys that were the closest followers of Jesus, they were called the disciples. You might know a few of them, Peter, James, John, uh, Bartholomew, Thomas maybe, Judas, dun, 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 we know Judas, and maybe a few others. Anybody here named after a disciple? Anybody? Yeah, okay, that sounds like a Thaddeus right there, good job. Uh, I'm named, my full name is Joshua Peter Griffin, and so, I, I know, I know. So first of all, Peter is the disciple, they check that box, and then Peter Griffin is the lead character on Family Guy, and so it's good to know who knows what in this audience. Okay, uh, Joshua Peter Griffin is my full name. When I go on missions trips and stuff like that overseas, I come back home, and they're, they're like, there's like a, a guy, a security dude at the immigration, he's like, all right, what do you got here? And he's like thinking I'm you know, a bad guy or whatever. And then he just cracks up when he sees Joshua Peter Griffin. He's like, get in here. You're a, you're a U.S. citizen. You're fine. It's the best. I'm named after a disciple, and so is Thaddeus over there. I don't know what you're doing. But there's a few disciples that after Jesus has been crucified on the cross, he's buried and rose again. Jesus leaves. He leaves the scene, and he leaves his disciples to do the mission. Now, spoiler alert, the disciples, the incredible men, and eventually then women and men and hundreds and thousands of people, now millions and billions of followers of Jesus, they're, the disciples are dead and gone. They were all martyred for their faith, which means they were killed for their beliefs. And so all 12 of them, actually Judas committed suicide, so all 11 of them, and then Matthias was the, kind of the 13th disciple, 12th disciple, whatever. all of them, the point is they're gone. And the mission of the disciple has fallen to you and to me. So the attributes of the disciple are really important because we are the fall. If you're here, and I totally realize not everybody in here is a follower of Jesus, just glad you're here, kicking the tires on Christianity, Jesus brought by a friend, I'm in. But here's the deal. If you are a follower of Jesus, if you're a disciple, we should look like those disciples. And we should walk with Jesus as that parody video tried to illustrate. Here's what it says in the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter four, I think it is verse 13, we'll put it on the screen, says this, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Peter and John are standing before uh, like a council of people that are basically putting them on trial and they're bold in front of them. It says this, it says, for the council could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Ordinary men, I like that. Verse continues, says, they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Let me just ask you a question. If someone was to follow you around, which that actually sounds like a stalker, actually, so hopefully that isn't happening to you, but if someone were to follow you around and listen to your jokes and watch your actions and hear what you have to say and see what you do, could they tell that you have been with Jesus? Could they tell, it's connected to the morning, right? But can they tell that your heart is soft to the things of Jesus, the ways and teachings of him? Could they tell that you are guarding and protecting your heart against evil? Can they tell that you have been with Jesus? If you like taking notes tonight, and I love that you are like, some of you are like pen out, ready to go, paper, notebook, whatever, you're gonna love tonight because tonight I'm gonna give you 13, I know, 13 ways to walk with Jesus. Now, here's what I, I'm, you, know, I don't, you don't have to do all 13. I don't want you to create, some of you are achievers in here. You have like a high level GPA. I, I didn't even know that there was a level above 4.0, but there's like a lot of levels above. And if you're that person right now, you're feeling pretty smug, right? Right? Just look at the person next to you. Just judge in your heart right now. Do they have more than a 4.0? And if so, punch them in the arm. Just keep them humble. Let's keep them humble. All right? Just be, be gentle. They're sensitive too. I did not have a 4.0. I didn't know it went above a 4.0. I love it when I tell you to do something. You, if I was like, slap someone next to you with a catfish, you'd be like, give it, here we go, let's do this. You're just in. Here's the deal. The temptation 
The temptation is going to be for you to furiously write these down and go, this is the checklist to be holy. And you're going to go home and you will sooner rather than later fail. And you will not be a 5.0 follower of Jesus and you will be defeated and destroyed and you'll be in a fetal position. Next time you're at youth group, you'll be like, ha ha, I just can't do it. Here's the deal. I'm not giving you a list for you to create. A ch- I'm giving you some ideas to make sure that you're guarding your heart. I want you to walk with Jesus. Too many teenagers I know are walking hand in hand with the world. And as a follower of his, it's called you to a different way. So if you got your pen and paper out or wanna at least take some mental notes along the way, I think this could be helpful to you. The disciples had clearly been with Jesus. First one, write it down. Never miss youth group. Never miss youth group. And some of you are like, um, I already do that. I never miss youth group. I am the, if they had an attendance award, I would be, I would get it because I never miss it. We call those kids in our youth ministry throw up kids. Because if we're like, hey, at youth group next week, we're going to throw up and drink soda until we throw up. You'd be like, how much does it cost? I'll be there. Like they're just your throw up kid. You're at every, so maybe the advanced one for you is never miss youth group and listen intently and worship passionately. Like maybe there's a little advance for you, got it, good. But if you're here and you're like, I'm just checking things out, I don't only go to youth group too much or I come every so often or stuff gets in the way, it's not a priority to me. A great way for you to walk with Jesus so that people can recognize the tenderness of your heart to the things of the Lord is to never miss youth group. Uh, our youth group meets uh, on the weekend, on Sundays. Uh, your, your youth group might meet on Wednesday or Tuesday or small group. I don't have any idea. Your youth group might be massive. You're, I grew up in a youth group of like 10 or 12, and it was so fun. We, did, we had the best memories. There was the, I, we had a volunteer who ran our ministry. His name was Jim, and Jim was a volunteer firefighter and a volunteer youth leader which means he never treated us to anything because he was broke all the time. He was dead broke. I actually don't know how he paid his rent, but whatever. He was a great guy who loved Jesus. Never miss youth group because here's what happens at youth group. You're going to go in there with your burdens or your baggage, right? Because what happens is if you don't, this morning, right, you get in the process of confession, those, those burdens that you carry, you, you, first of all, you carry them on your back or you drag them behind you. You carry them. They get heavier the older you get. Your burdens get heavier. And so the stuff that you're carrying starts to weigh you down. And the beauty of going to youth group is being surrounded by a community. is a chance for you to have some, the Bible says is in multiple places, we carry each other's burdens. Sometimes you look around here and you look at other people like, how do they, how do, they do that? They figured out life. Like, what is the secret sauce? How do they, it's because they've learned to get rid of their baggage. And don't forget, The baggage that you're dragging behind you comes with forward with you. So it also comes into your home and your marriage and your relationships. And a lot of dads and moms pass their baggage onto their kids. So deal with your baggage. Some of you are like, I know that all too well because I've got some of the the baggage from my family. Well, how about it ends with you and you live that way where you live in confession. You take care of your heart. Yeah, you feel it. Good. Never miss youth group. And if you already don't miss youth group, worship passionately, listen intently. Second thing up on the screen, offer to help someone in need. Offer to help someone in need. If you want your heart to stay tender towards the things of Jesus, then help someone in need. It it doesn't take much. I am amazed at how little we have to do in order to be recognized by our culture. I was at this thing at the Coliseum up in LA, uh, or the Forum, the LA Forum, and it was was like this day where we honor teenagers who have given acts of service. Like my daughter is huge in community service, she loves it, and so she got a letter just recently from President Biden, and it was like, you did a lot of service hours, and she's so proud of that. And and we went to this like celebration day of all these teenagers that have done amazing things in the community. They play this video, and the video is spectacular, and it's like, 
this star-studded event, like Selena Gomez introduces this video, and I'm like, this is incredible. Like, there's bands and concerts. This is a day of celebrating just good community service. And the video goes something like this. This girl has been amazing. She has made scars for the homeless people, and she's helped people all over Los Angeles area. And I'm like, what did she, this is amazing. She's given back, like the bar is so high. And then at the end of the video, like, and she's made now over six scarves. And I thought it was gonna be like 6D scarves or 600 scarves. It was six. This, she helped people, which I appreciate, but they, they made a huge deal out of someone who made six scarves for homeless people. And I'm sure those six people are warmer and it was helpful for them. But I thought, we can do better. As followers of Jesus, as his disciples, as his followers, with a heart that should be leaning towards people that are typically invisible in our culture. So the, the, the followers of Jesus have different eyes than everybody else. If you have eyes like the world, you're pointed at yourself, right? Your camera is pointed at you. Your world centers around you. The planet revolves around you. But the followers of Jesus, the disciples, that isn't how we work. Our eyes are pointed at other people. So what if, what if you were to help someone in need? It could be a small thing. It could be a really big thing. It could be somebody in the the row you're in right now. It could be somebody who's not here. It could be someone in your youth group, someone at your school, someone on your football team, whatever. Have the eyes of Jesus. It will transform your heart. It will align your heart with the things of God. Offer to help someone in need. Next one. Text a kind word to a friend. Now he thought, oh, the bar couldn't get lower. It's actually lower. Here we go. Text a kind word to a friend. Now I know that, now don't pull out your phones right now. Hold on. All right. Here, some of you are like, finally, I can, no. Some of you are resentful because your leaders took your phones away during the session. Just hang in there. You're going to be all right. It's only like 20 minutes. You'll be all right. Um, text a kind word to a friend. This seems incredibly small, maybe even insignificant. But let me read an example to you to let you know what I'm talking about. Here's what it looks like. A text could look like this. I really wish I could hug you now instead of sending this text message. I know you must be feeling devastated and lonely right now. I am here with you day and night. Now sit on that just for a second. Some of you are like, I could do that. I mean, I would try to make it less cheesy, but I could do that. Like I could text some kind words to someone in need and maybe that would be encouraging. And some of you are thinking, I would give anything for someone to see me like that and send me those words. Some of you in here feel wounded or hurt or invisible. And if someone gave you even just a few seconds of thumbs on glass, it would change your day, and maybe much, much more. What if you were to, what if you were to text a kind word to somebody? Um, I'd like to do an experiment. How many of you don't hold them up? How many of you have your phone with you? You have your phone with you in the session right now? Oh, lots and lots. Okay. Thank you for not having them out right now. Yeah, put your phone down. How dare you? Uh, let's do this. I'm going to uh, think. Think about the person. I'll tell you mine. Uh... Her name is Jana. Jana's a good friend of mine. Uh, she has cancer, it's pretty bad, and the cancer is affecting her heart. She's on her third day in the hospital, three, four young kids, it's not looking good. I've been thinking about her. She is on my prayer list, but I bet if I took just a few seconds and sent a text and prayed at the same time for her, I bet it would be really meaningful. But I haven't. I'm busy. I got a lot of stuff going on. And, and so do you. And so we don't. And those opportunities to minister and care and change our hearts are missed. So I'd be thinking about yours. Who would you text? If, and they might be in this room, which would be weird, right? Like your text message goes up to like, SpaceX satellites beams all over the world and comes right back to the person three people away from you. Like, oh, thank you, there it is. Uh, it, unless you have Sprint, then it would take a long time. It would be like 25, 30 seconds. 
missed call. You're like, ah, just throw my phone away. Just throw my phone away. Um, all right, I'm going to do this. This feels like a bad idea, but I'm going to do it. If you, have your, if you don't have your phone, think of that person and say a short prayer for them in your mind. Uh, if you have your phone, take it out, text that person. I will count down from 30. That's about 400 words for you, so I know you can do it. 30, 29, 28, I know, a lot of pressure. 27, I told you to be ready. Shh, texting doesn't require your mouth. 26, 25, 24, 23, 20, did I just skip a couple? Yes, 19, 18, 17, 16, 14, 12, two, just kidding, just kidding. I was homeschooled, forgive me. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, five more seconds. Three, wait, four, three, two, one. Phones down, put them away, put them away, go, done, put it away, stick it in your pocket, be done, it's over, put it in your purse, put it in your backpack, hide it under your Bible, put it away, leader, smack the phone out of their hands, take it away. Well, yeah, no, don't really do that, it was, an, it was a joke. All right, phones away. Now here's what I know, it's gonna happen. You took 30-ish seconds to think about somebody else, to pray for somebody else, to send a kind word. It really wasn't that much effort. But what's kind of fun is in a few seconds, your phone is gonna ding if you forgot to turn it off, or your phone is gonna vibrate, and your instant reaction is gonna be like, I need to, no, I don't want you to. I know, I know. You're gonna feel it, and you're gonna hear someone else's, and you're gonna be like, I should, but don't. Because here's why, here's why. It's gonna be really significant to that person. It is. And I want the message to not just be this little moment we have together, but I want you to have a little bit more time to process what I'm talking about when you look at your phone a few minutes from now. So do me a favor, leave it in your pocket or aside and wait, and I promise you it will be a meaningful extension of this moment. The eyes of Jesus, a little bit of time, care, prayer, attention makes a big difference. Phones down, good job. Next one, up on the screen. Take the next step and get baptized. Maybe you've been a follower of Jesus for a while and it's time to get baptized. Maybe it's time to find that next step for you that you have been dragging your feet on. Whatever that looks like in your youth group, your church culture, your, your particular denomination's beliefs and say, I'm gonna take the next step. The, the problem is that so many Christians, they, they rock it forward in their faith and then they just stop walking. And they're like, I'm good, I'm good to go, I'm all set. And that is when the devil wants to swoop in and trip you up and trap you up, and take you down. So take the next step, whatever that might look like. Next one on the screen, oust. That's a great word, oust some friends that need to go, oust. What does oust mean? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Like, Get rid of, toss, kick out. Yeah, oust some friends that need to go. Who are the most important people in your life? It is not an influencer, but you are being influenced by a whole bunch of people. Obviously, your family, mom, dad, whatever your story is, your friends are a really big deal. This is why your parents are borderline obsessed with who your, your friends are because your friends are shaping who you are. And if, if it's interesting, if you're like, no one ever seems to care about who my friends are, I think you should take a good look at, at you and go, am I the type of friend that someone else's parents are concerned about? So maybe oust some friends, or maybe you need to, to change. Oust some friends that need to go. It's a really, really big deal. Decide that time with God is important. The next one on the list, decide that time with God is important. It, when I was growing up, it was called a quiet time. It was this devotional time, and it was this very prescriptive 20-minute devotional time in the morning where you spent time with God. And if that is familiar and comfortable to you, go for it. It's awesome. But there are many ways to walk with Jesus. I'm gonna put a few examples of some resources up on the screen. You could talk to your youth leader, your small group leader, your youth pastor about what these could look like. 
Um, our youth ministry, we're using the One Minute Bible, which is literally a Bible that you read one minute a day. Like, I know you're like, the bar couldn't be any lower. One Minute Bible. I actually think we should try the 30 Second Bible because that might be more popular. I don't know. But here's the deal one minute a day at the end of a month. That's 30 minutes at the end of a year. That's hours of being in God's word. And that's way more than zero. So it doesn't bother me that it's a one minute Bible. I'm all about it. All of our eighth graders who just graduated into their freshman year, we gave them the case for Christ student edition. We were doing a a Bible study called, can I ask that? Because there are big questions that our culture is facing. And oftentimes in the church, we don't ask them. And so at some point, if our faith is shallow, it's going to crumble and fall apart. And so how about we ask some difficult questions in our youth ministry and our churches? And so a resource that might be good for you to suggest is, can I ask that? And it asks all of the tough questions. Spend time with God. Going to youth group, super important. But it's really important that it's your walk with God. more than attendance to uh, a program. Decide that time with God is important. Next one, attack your addictions. Attack your addictions. I chose that word really specifically, attack. It's like a verbal, it's like an assaulting word, it's an action word. It's because addictions have the opportunity to just hold on severely tight. Everybody take your hand right now and make a fist and clench it as hard as you can, like nails digging into you the palm of your hand. Go ahead, do it right now. Like, like really go for it. And then let go. Something powerful about letting go. I like that word attack. Here's why. If you kind of go after and maybe, ugh, I need to deal with that or I know, it's a total, it's, it's gonna come back. It's gonna come roaring back. Attack your addictions. I've seen way too many teenagers who don't take that seriously and they get into that incredibly strong grip and it will not let you go. Attack your addictions. Next one, yield to your mentor. Maybe for you, you're like, yield to my mentor. I don't even have a mentor. Maybe for you, it's talking to someone, either a peer in your youth group who's like, man, he or she would be an amazing like peer mentor to me. Maybe it's talking to your small group leader or your youth pastor or whatever the story is in your ministry and say, I need someone to mentor me. All that means is someone who comes alongside you and walks with you in your walk with Jesus that just does regular checkups on your heart, right? A clean heart starts with confession and is maintained with accountability. And so, man, bring, invite that into your life. If you're an upperclassman and you're here, you're a junior or a senior in high school, where are you at? Do I have any juniors or seniors? Oh, yes, I like it. There you are. You know what? You could be a mentor. You should be a mentor, probably to a squirrely junior hire who looks up to you and thinks you're the greatest thing ever. Well, what if you said... I'm, I need a mentor, and I'm going to be a mentor. In the scriptures, Jesus always sent out his disciples two by two. He sent them out together so they were more powerful together, and we need that in our hearts and lives as well. Yield to your mentor, that might be the advanced version. Maybe get or ask for a mentor might be where you need to start today. The next one. Seek God in prayer. Seek God in prayer. The example for this is definitely Daniel. If you've been around church stuff for a while, you know Daniel and the lion's den. And Daniel prayed three times a day. He prayed morning, noon, and night, which is where oftentimes we get the tradition of praying for our meals. So we pray for our meals because he prayed three times a day, and so we eat three times a day. Except for me, I eat about six times a day, which means I'm a very good prayer warrior. And so here's the deal. If... if, If you were to pray three times a day, just for a moment, God, I give you this day. This day is yours. I promise you would change your morning. If around lunchtime, instead of, you know, 
rub dub dub, thank God for the grub, or whatever your lunchtime prayer is, or you're at school and you're like, I don't really want to pray, I'm just going to pray in my heart, thank you, God, amen, or whatever your story is. I, maybe you say, God, I've got a big test coming up, or there's a challenge on my football team, there's something cooking in this fine arts program, there's a person that I do not like who I see every time in six, six period, I just, I'm just dying inside. God, give me the strength. Help me to remember the answers of the test that I didn't study for. That's a prayer we've all prayed. And then maybe, maybe a, a third prayer would be a nighttime prayer when those temptations usually come back and you say, God, help me to be strong right now. Three simple prayers, more than just praying for our food, could be really significant in your heart and life as you walk with Jesus and as you guard your heart. Next one, up on the screen. Adopt visitors at youth group. We have a simple, a simple statement in our youth ministry that I love. No one sits alone. Nobody sits alone at our youth group. And so what was one of your commitments to invite people into your youth ministry, into your church, into whatever it is, is to just say, nobody sits alone. I'm always, I love my friends. I love hanging out with my friends. Youth group is about my friends, yes, but it's also about inviting people into the community of the church. When I talk to our students, I always say, use Pac-Man. Think Pac-Man. You guys know Pac-Man, right? Wah, 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 eating the little pellets all right, and the ghosts and the woo, woo, woo. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. That was a very descriptive job of Pac-Man. Man, I did a really good job. If you didn't know what Pac-Man was, you know now. That was, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pac-Man. I just say, in, oftentimes, you know, a bunch of kids get together, and it's a closed, it's a wall. Like, you can't get into this circle of girls because they have made a formation, and it's like, it's impenetrable. There's no way we can get in. There's just, it's like a, it's like a holy huddle, click, and someone on the outside would give anything to be in that circle, maybe just to hang in there, maybe not even to say anything, just be in there. So what if instead of a closed off wall, you made it a Pac-Man and you open it up and you left room for somebody? Just if somebody wants to join, it's a subtle way of saying, come on in, be a part of the community, be a part of the church, be a part of my life, be a part of my story. We want you here. The opposites, I mean, this also is sending a very powerful message, saying, nope, this place isn't for you. I are full up on friends, not interested. Good luck, hope you find a different church. Uh, God doesn't love you. That's, I mean, that's what it's saying. I know, you're like, I didn't know I was doing that. Okay, now you do. Now you're in trouble, all right? Here's the deal. Open up, open up the circle and say, come on in, adopt someone new at youth group. Next one, tell a friend about Jesus. Think about somebody, and, and I would say, if you want like, here, here's a couple of ideas of who this friend could be. This friend could be somebody like, they used to come to youth group and they missed for a few weeks, so in, invite them back. Or what if you prayed something really bold? Like that one kid at your school, your neighborhood, or your family, whatever, that there's no chance in the world they would ever come to youth group or church. Like there's, like I know God loves everybody and he can do miracles, but he, he no, no, he's not gonna. Why don't you pray for that? Pray for that person and then pray that God will give you an opportunity and the boldness to say something. Tell someone about Jesus. And I would say, pray a bold prayer on that one. The next one, I've seen this be really helpful to students as well. Attend a Christian club at school. Some of you maybe already go to a, a private school or Christian school, whatever, so you're like, that's, that's easy for you. But uh, in, our, in our community, we have Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And then in some of our schools, they don't have a Christian club. And so I said, well, just start one. And so they brainstormed a bunch of names to start a Christian club. And they came up with uh, a name. I'll tell you the name, and then you can be the judge if it's good or not. The name of the club is Cookies and Christ. I know, not bad, not bad. I like both of those things, Cookies and Jesus. I'm in, I'm totally all about it. They started a club and I was like, I don't know, it's a cookie, and they bring cookies every other week. It is the fastest growing club in the high school in our area, Cookies and Christ. Not sure on the name, but they've nailed the cookies part and they're telling people about Jesus. Here's what happens. You get a chance for your heart to be softened. 
a chance for your eyes to be open, a chance for you to be a disciple so that when people look at you and you stand before the council like Peter and John, they'll say, I can tell they've been with Jesus. Start a Christian, Christian club or attend a Christian club. Last one, 13, right? Never hold back in confession. Never hold back. When you're talking to your youth leader and you finally say that thing that you've been holding on to, you finally open up the suitcase to the baggage that you've been carrying, oftentimes we hold on to the last 10%. Like our parents knew all this and so we, we confessed what we did wrong, and then, but they didn't know about this last little 10% and so I'm just gonna hold on to that and it's gonna be okay. And I would say never hold back in confession. Once you're at 90%, good job. Just finish, go, like, oh, you confess it all. It is so freeing. It's the best. Otherwise, like we learned this morning, we are tempted to hide that, and it gets heavier, and the burdens will grow, and oftentimes the addiction or temptation will come roaring back. It's a big list. Not looking for you to like start checking out like, tomorrow morning. I'm gonna start with prayer and I'm gonna read my Bible and I'm gonna pray for some. I'm gonna send somebody a text and I'm gonna, and you just like blast through this list. That's not what I'm asking at all. But what I would like for you to do is look down at the list or mentally go over it and think this way. Think this way. Which one are you like, I'm doing that? Like, this is one I'm good at. Like, put a star by it, circle it, whatever it needs to be. Like, this is one I'm doing my best. I'm not, I don't have it all together, but I'm, I'm trying, all right? Find one in there that you're like, that's, that's my strength. And then take your pen and underline the one where you're like, I gotta work on that. Or this is the one that I'm gonna go after this year. This is the one that I'm not gonna let escape my grasp. This is the one I wanna concentrate on because I want my heart to be pointed towards Jesus. Now, I, I want to go super practical. That's why I've just dumped ideas on you tonight of how you can do this. But here's why. 13 things that you've written down or seen. Look at the, the first letter of each of those up on the screen. Not today, Satan. Here's, here's why. Here's why it matters. Because in the book of Peter, we are warned about the adversary. The adversary, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, prowls around, it says in Peter, like a roaring lion, looking for whom he may devour. And those who are walking with Jesus, sometimes carried by Jesus through the difficult times, those whose hearts are sensitive, whose eyes are open, they're caring and loving, that are committed to attacking their addictions and helping a, a mentor have access to their life and maybe mentoring the next generation, that type of person will stand strong when the temptations come. They will stand firm when the, the opportunity comes to leave God's path. When the crossroads happen in your life, and they will, if they haven't yet, soon you will get to a crossroads of choice. And you will be making a decision. Am I going to follow God's way or the world's way? It's coming. It's happening. In fact, I mean, it's still happening in my life. It it's going to continue. You're going to have to make a choice. And I want your heart to be sensitive to the ways of Jesus. I want it to be protected because Satan's trying to, to trip you up. He's trying to trap you. He's trying to take you down. I don't want that to happen to you. We learned a verse this morning. Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. We learned a verse in Psalms that says, create in me, God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. These are some ideas, not a checklist, but some ideas 
to make sure that you can be recognized as someone who has been with Jesus. I got an idea. Don't know if it's a good idea or not, but we'll find out. Um, there's a bunch of people in this room who care for you, who would love it if you were to make a spiritual decision to stand firm, stand strong, to walk with Jesus, to guard your heart, they would be thrilled to help you in that journey. So tonight, I'd like to make an invitation to you. Uh, Leaders will find their way to the front. There's people up here that would love to pray with you, encourage you. This is what I'd like for you to do. If you're ready, and you're ready to to say, I'm going to do this, in a moment, I'd like for you to step out from wherever you're sitting, come forward, tell the, one of the leaders in the front, maybe you recognize them, maybe they're from your church or maybe not, whatever, and tell them, this is what I'm committing to. Maybe it's one of the 13 ideas, I don't know. This is what I want to do. This is my commitment. This is how I want to walk with Jesus. And then ask them to pray for you in that specific way. So for example... God, I, I, I'm going to come down here and, and commit to God. Um, I'm going to tell my friend about Jesus. Here's their name. The name is, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you mine. Um, I'm trying to reach my buddy Shane. Shane's a neighbor of mine. I want Shane to know Jesus. And so if I was to come forward tonight, I would say, I'm going to tell my friend Shane about Jesus and invite him to church. And will you pray for me? And that leader is going to meet you right here, and they're going to pray for you and pray for Shane. You can go back to your seat, whatever, you, whatever else you need to do. Maybe for you, you need to come forward and you need to say, hey, man, I'm ready to be honest about that addiction. Here's what's going on. I'm, I'm wanna, I want prayer because I need strength and I need someone to walk with me in this. And you're going to take it seriously. It's a big deal just to say those words. So good for you if that's you tonight. And whatever it is, maybe like, you, you realize that your walk with Jesus, you're pretty far from Jesus. And you're like, I, whatever your decision is, I'm going to invite you to come up and share how you want to walk with Jesus and receive some prayer tonight. I think it could be a special time and a great start to future quests. You guys, bow your heads and close your eyes just for a second. I'm going to pray for us and leaders will come. And I want to invite you as well. And most importantly, if you don't know Jesus and he's been working in your heart and life, I hope that you'll step out and say, I've never walked with Jesus before. I I haven't been guarding my heart because I don't follow him. And tonight you come down and say, will you pray for me because I I want to trust Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to become a follower of Jesus tonight and take my first steps walking with him. Maybe that's you tonight too. We invite you to come. Let me pray for us and we'll go. God, uh, Peter and John must have been remarkable people because when they interacted with them, they could see their heart and their faith was strong. God, that's the kind of faith I want to have. So God, um, I give this time to you. May we find it to be a powerful moment in our lives that maybe we'll look back on and say, I remember where everything changed. I remember where I made that commitment, where you met me at the altar and you worked in my heart or finally said that thing that I needed to say and got help where I needed help. Jesus, we want to walk with you tonight. And so we give this time of response and worship back to you. We love you, Jesus. We ask all those things in your name. Amen. Amen.